the Lower Wai Valley, a mighty river valley, an area of outstanding natural beauty, a valley seemingly lost in time, a valley which was centuries ago at the cutting edge of technology. And once far away from the tempting sins of the cities, where medieval monks built an impressive abbey to the glorification of their god. It's a valley of people, poets, dukes, princesses, and kings, where ancient royal woodlands survive, salmon still leap the weirs, and historic traditions are kept alive. A valley asking to be explored, a walker's paradise, and where to expect the unusual. The Y Valley, our heritage. As the 19th century traveler George Burroughs said, the loveliest river probably the world can boast of. Having descended from the heights of Plinlimon, the starting point of its 154-mile journey to the sea, it eventually reaches the beginning of our travels. The sturdy market town of ross on wye commands a sandstone hilltop, with the slender spire of St. Mary's Church soaring above the climbing terraces. Well, Ross carried on with that market role for several hundred years, remained a fairly sleepy, little town, miles away from anywhere, until, I suppose, the 1800s, 1700s, when it uh, became well known for somebody who lived here, Mr. John Curl, the man of Ross. Now, he actually lived in the 1600s, but his fame spread when Alexander Pope, the great poet, wrote a poem about this man Curl and his generosity to local people and uh, all the things he did for Ross on Wye. He uh, built the prospect, he put water on for the citizens to use, rebuilt the spire of the church, and uh, gave uh, advice freely, lent money whenever needed, generally fed the poor, lovely sort of guy. And of course he inspired people in the 19th century to really to get on and form the National Trust. <laughs> 